Hello everyone, my name is Asil Koç and I was a PhD candidate at uh, McGill University uh, under the supervision of Professor Tol Lenok. And um, this is the video recording of my PhD oral defense on October 14, which I successfully passed. And uh, the, the title of my PhD thesis is the hybrid beam forming techniques in full duplex, half duplex, messy MIMA wireless communications. Wireless communications have impacted across various fields of our lives by enabling fast and reliable information exchange. Also, it has positively transformed various industries, including automotive, uh, manufacturing, entertainment, healthcare, and etc. And therefore, this leads uh, to uh, continuously increasing capacity demands, expectations in the 5G and beyond uh, wireless communication systems to support stringent uh, requirements uh, in the uh, in the three generic use cases and uh, represented here and various target applications. And according to the well-known Shannon's capacity formula, uh, the ever-growing demands can be fulfilled by developing advanced transmission techniques such as MASI, MIMO, and beamforming, or exploration of uh, new frequency spectrum uh, like millimeter wave, or the effective utilization of the limited bandwidth resources such as using the full duplex. Uh, technology. Here is the brief outline of this uh, presentation. After expressing our motivation as well as the contributions in this PhD thesis, I'll first present the proposed solutions for the half duplex massive MIMO systems. Uh, then we'll move to the uh, the, uh, the full duplex uh, massive MIMO uh, systems, where we discuss about the, the proposed hybrid beam forming based self interference canceller. And uh, finally, the presentation ends with the conclusions and the possible future work directions. Multiple input, multiple output, or shortly uh, MIMO technology, uh, stands for utilization of the multiple transmit and receive antennas, as shown in here. And it has been, by means of its success, it has been uh, already an integral part of the existing wireless standards over the last 15 years, since it uses space as another dimension uh, to enhance the capacity. And around a decade ago, there was a paradigm shift in the MIMO technology called as massive MIMO. And it, it implies the utilization of the accessible large antenna arrays. Then, as shown in, uh, in here, Massive MIMO enables the three dimensional beamforming uh, by generating extremely narrow beams towards the intended direction. So, its benefits include the high spectral and energy efficiency, enhanced coverage, improved interference management, and uh, possibility to uh, support point to point or multi user uh, scenario. But uh, it also brings some technical challenges. Uh, such as uh, by means of, by, due to the uh, large number of antenna uh, uh, arrays, it brings the high hardware and computation complexity, as well as the large channel estimation overhead sizes. Uh, for the technical challenges, let's first start discussing on the beamforming, which is an essential signal processing technique for the transmission and reception, in particular, precoding for the downlink and combining for the uplink transmission. And in the conventional MIMO systems, the fully digital beamforming is widely considered uh, which requires a single power-hungry RF chain per each antenna, and although it achieves good performance, it, it might not be applicable for massive MIMO systems with large antenna arrays because of the high hardware cost and complexity. And the other extreme is the fully analog beamforming, uh, which uh, utilizes only a single RF chain to support large number of antennas, although it has low hardware complexity, but it has also poor performance. And as an alternative, hybrid beamforming is proposed as a uh, promising technique which splits the beamformer into two stages as the uh, analog part and the digital part and these are connect interconnected with a uh, low number of uh, RF chains. That's why it can reduce the hardware complexity as well as providing uh, good performance. Also, uh, as we will discuss in the following slides, it can it, it, it is possible to also uh, further reduce the, the channel estimation overhead size when we use the, the proposed angular-based uh, RF beamformer design. On the other hand, in order to increase the capacity under the, uh, the spectrum shortage in the current sub-6 GHz frequencies, the exploration of the new frequency bands are also essential, uh, such as millimeter wave communication. Although the, the, uh, the propagation environment in the MM wave frequencies are challenging due to the limited scattering and high path loss, uh, it brings a large amount of bandwidth compared to the sub-6 GHz. Uh, furthermore, uh, the shorter wavelengths in the millimeter wave is a perfect match for the massive MIMO systems in order to fit large number of antennas under the practical area constraints. 
And uh, the full duplex uh, communication is another promising technology. Unlike the, the conventional half duplex uh, transmission, it can theoretically double the capacity since uh, because of the, the simultaneous transmission and reception over the same frequency bands. However, in practice, uh, it uh, severely affected from the, the strong self-interference and messy MIMO can be also another good candidate to improve the self-interference cancellation quality by generating extremely uh, transmit and receive uh, beams towards the intended direction. In this PhD thesis, we develop novel hybrid beamforming solutions for various uh, messy MIMO systems. And uh, during the hybrid beamforming design, our strategy is to develop the RF stage based on slow time varying angular information and the baseband stage with the effective low dimensional channel matrices. So uh, by this way, we can reduce the estimation overhead size as well as the hardware cost and complexity. And this thesis includes two main parts as shown in here. Uh, in, the, in the first part, we first developed the hybrid pre-coding and user grouping solutions for multi-user massive MIMO systems. Then we investigate the, uh, the, uh, the power allocation problem for the sum rate maximization objective. And uh, after that, the, uh, we consider the fairness expectative uh, fairness uh, aspect, and after that, we uh, consider the we extend the hybrid pre-coding solutions for the multi-cell scenario. And at the end of the first part, uh, we look at the effect of the low-resolution hardware components like the digi uh, digital to analog and analog to di analog to digital converters uh, on the performance of the hybrid beamforming. And in the second part, we uh, concentrate on the full duplex uh, communication, and we try to develop the the, the hybrid beamforming based. Uh, self-interference cancellation canceller for the massive MIMO systems. And uh, in this presentation, uh, I will concentrate on the on the uh, on the following chapters. Let's first start with the half duplex part. Uh, we first developed the hybrid pre-coding and the user grouping uh, algorithms for the half duplex uh, multi-user massive MIMO systems. And according to the system model given in here, we consider the base station is equipped with M antennas to serve K uh, single antenna downlink users, and they are clustered in G groups. Uh, at the beginning, uh, we consider that the number of groups is a priori unknown. That's why proposed user grouping algorithm first finds the number of groups and then uh, clusters K users inside the the, the, in, the K users in into uh, G groups. And after that, we have the angular-based hybrid precoding solution. Uh, according to the system model given in here, we have the RF stage F and the baseband uh, stage B. Uh, the RF stage F, uh, uh, we developed the, uh, the, the RF beamformer based on slow time varying angular information. And idea is to maximize the beamforming gain in the intended direction. And it, after that one, uh, we have the baseband solution, which is based on the fast time varying uh, effective channel metrics, which is the multiplication of the, uh, the full size channel metrics with the, uh, with the RF uh, beamformer. And the idea is to minimize the inter and intra group uh, interference. And here uh, we develop uh, joint, common, or per group processing uh, uh, techniques uh, with having different channel estimation overhead sizes. And according to the hybrid beamformer uh, design, hybrid precorder design, we have the, the transmitted downlink signal vector S defined as uh, in here as the multiplication of F, B, and D. D is the data signal vector. And uh, that's why the received signal at uh, a given user is the combination of the intended signal plus interference and also the noise. That's why in equation two, we have the sum rate capacity for the, uh, for the investigated multi-user massive MIMO systems. Uh, this slide presents the sum rate performance of the digital precoding uh, and various hybrid precoding techniques, including the proposed angular-based hybrid precoding solution. And the sum rate is plotted versus the SNR uh, where the triangle uh, sh uh, shape with the black, uh, black curve with the triangle shape uh, shows the digital precoding, and uh, the red curve with the uh, circle shape shows the proposed angular based hybrid precoding with using the joint uh, group processing. And uh, here we consider the, the base station is equipped with uh, 400 antennas to serve 18 users, and it is important to highlight that the digital precoding requires. Uh, uh, 400 RF chains because each antenna requires a single RF chain. Uh, but on the other hand, the, the proposed hybrid precoding solution uh, can uh, support 18 users with only equipping only 18 RF chains. That's why it means 95% reduction in the hardware cost and complexity. 
And uh, for different joint common or per group processing, we can see that uh, we can also greatly reduce the, the channel estimation overhead sizes. And uh, the, the first uh, important results that we observe is, although we can reduce the channel estimation overhead sizes as well as the hardware cost and complexity, compared to the digit, fully digital solution, we can, uh, we can close the approach to the, the performance of the fully digital uh, pre-coding uh, by only 1 dB uh, degradation in, in SNR. And also we can greatly outperform the other benchmark techniques uh, using the hybrid pre-coding uh, te uh, technique. And in the previous uh, scenario, while serving multiple users, we had first considered the uh, equal power allocation uh, when we have multiple users to serve. And now we try to also consider the, the power allocation problem for the sum rate maximization objective. That's why in this, uh, at the moment now, in, in addition to the RFP informer and the baseband precoder, now we have also the, the power allocation uh, matrix uh, P. And that's why the transmitted signal vector is defined as the combination of F, B, P, and the data signal D. That's why the sum rate maximization problem is given in equation three. However, this is a non-convex optimization problem. Uh, that's why the question is how to find the optimal allocated powers among the users. And uh, now we propose two AI ML based uh, solutions. Uh, in the first solution, uh, we apply the, uh, the, the particle swarm optimization uh, technique, which is a nature inspired uh, AI algorithm. Uh, it employs multiple search agents as shown in here and uh, the search agents communicate uh, with each other through the iterations with the aim of finding the, the optimal uh, solution. And in the proposed PSO-based power allocation algorithm, uh, we try to maximize the sum rate capacity by finding the, uh, the optimal allocated powers. And uh, the numerical results shows us we can uh, find the almost optimal capacity, but it comes with the expense of the, the high computational complexity. Then in the second approach, we also develop the deep learning based power allocation technique. Uh, here we use uh, PSOPA as a, uh, as a teacher to train a deep neural network having three hidden layers as shown in here. And uh, in the proposed DLPA algorithm, we have two phases. In the first phase, which is called as the offline supervised learning uh, phase, we use PSOPA uh, to have, uh, to have the, uh, the labels for the, uh, for the power values. And then we try to retrain the neural network uh, to make a good prediction. And in the second phase, which is the online power prediction part, uh, we uh, run the trained neural network to have the faster prediction. And the numerical results shows that we can close the approach to the optimal capacity by greatly reducing the, the runtime. And in figure two, we present the sum rate performance of the PSOPA uh, with the yellow bars and the DLPA with the red and the blue bars, and the, also the black one is the, uh, the equal power allocation. And here we have the results for three users and six user cases, and we consider the base station equipped with 256 uh, antennas. And uh, here, uh, what we observe in all test validation and the training data sets, uh, we can uh, see that the DLPA closed the approach to the PSOPA, and uh, uh, furthermore, we can greatly enhance the capacity uh, compared to the uh, compared to the equal power allocation. And uh, but the, the the question is how we can uh, the the next question is uh, okay it can maybe achieve good performance in terms of the capacity but what about the runtime? That's why in Figure three on the left we have the sum rate results with respect to the number of users and the, also on the right what we have is the runtime results uh, again plotted versus the number of users and what we observe. Uh, here, uh, the DLPA closed the approach to the, uh, to the PSOPA, uh, but uh, as long as we increase the number of users, we observe a slight degradation when we compare the blue and the uh, black curve. But on the right, uh, when we look at the runtime, uh, uh, the runtime for the uh, PSOPA is actually exponential increases. Uh, this plot is pl uh, plotted in the, uh, in the logarithmic scale, that's why uh, it is. Uh, it could be misleading, but the uh, the runtime for the PSOP is uh, exponentially increases as long as we increase the number of uh, users. But when you look at the DLPA, it almost has the same runtime. And for the DLPA, we use either MATLAB uh, to run the trained neural network, or we used also the uh, special AI development card, the Xilinx VCK5000 uh, card, 
to uh, to make the measurement. And what we observe, uh, we observe that uh, uh, the, in table one we have the relative performances. For the sum rate performance, we can we observe that we can close the approach to the TSOP, but for the runtime, we can see that especially for 12 users, we can reduce the runtime more than 99% nine uh, uh, compared to the uh, PSOP, and it looks appealing for the real-time online applications. And now we move to the full duplex massive MIMO communication as the second part of this thesis. And here we first investigate the point-to-point -point massive MIMO systems as shown in here. And uh, here, uh, because of the full duplex operation, uh, there is a simultaneous uh, data transmission and reception at each each node, and that's why uh, we experience uh, uh, a self-interference uh, channel uh, this time. And the self-interference channel includes two parts as the line of sight and non-line of sight component, uh, as shown in, in here. And that's why the HSI uh, is the represented as the summation of HLOS and HNLOS. And that's why uh, for the cancellation perspective, uh, the antenna isolation, uh, as shown in here, the, the line of sight components, uh, we aim to suppress the non line of sight components with the antenna isolation. Uh, but the, uh, uh, the, the main, uh, main purpose in this uh, work is to develop the, uh, the extremely narrow beams in the, in the proposed hybrid beamforming solution uh, to further suppress the, uh, the non line of sight components. That's why in the proposed hybrid beamforming based uh, self interference cancellation technique, we again develop the RF stage based on the slow time varying angular information, in particular the angle of departure and angle of arrival. And here we uh, consider the uh, orthogonal beamforming uh, technique uh, to maximize the intended signal power as long as uh, suppressing the strong self interference power. And afterwards, in the baseband stage, uh, we develop, uh, we have two approaches. Uh, one of them is the well-known SVD approach, and the other one we uh, we derive the uh, the MMSC expression for the baseband uh, stages. And here uh, it is important to highlight that the, unlike the, the existing literature, uh, the baseband stages develop uh, without uh, requiring the, the instantaneous SI channel uh, knowledge. At this point, it might be necessary to highlight uh, what is the difference between the half duplex and uh, full duplex scenarios, and what is the challenge in the in the full duplex, especially. And in the conventional half duplex transmission, when we si transmit signal from node one to node two, the received signal at node two includes the intended signal as well as the noise. Then the question is, what is the challenge in the full duplex uh, scenario? And in the full duplex case, uh, because of the simultaneous transmission and reception at each node. The received signal at node two includes the, the intended signal transmitted from uh, first uh, first node, and also the self-interference signal experienced because of the simultaneous transmission at the node two. That's why uh, the the combined signal, according to the uh, the hybrid beamformer architecture, the combined signal in this case includes the intended signal, self-interference uh, signal, and also the the modified noise. That's why in the in the proposed full duplex hybrid beamforming design. The objective is not only to maximize uh, the intended signal power, but also, more importantly, uh, to suppress the strong self-interference power. And uh, then, how we can do it? We we plan we aim to uh, develop a, a joint RFP informer design uh, to satisfy this approximate real condition. Uh, then uh, we can uh, suppress the strong self-interference power. In figure four, we present the power values for the intended and the self-interference signal, and the, the power values are plotted versus the antenna isolation. And in this setup, we consider the uh, both nodes equipped with 256 transmit and receive antenna arrays, uh, antennas, and uh, uh, we have uh, four data stream uh, simultaneously transmitted and received at each node. And uh, here, uh, let's first start with the intended signal. But here it is also important to highlight that the, the square shape is represents the power before the beamforming and the circle one is the, uh, the power after the beamforming. And when you look at the intended signal, uh, which is shown with the red curves, uh, we observe that we mostly preserve the, uh, the intended signal power after the beamforming with only two degree degradation, and which was the, one of the uh, objectives uh, presented in the previous slide. And when we look at the, the SI signal power, uh, the SI signal power actually 
Before the beamforming, it starts from the 30 dBm, which is the transmit power, when there is no antenna isolation, which means 0 dB antenna isolation. And now what we observe here, uh, the, uh, the, the self-interference power uh, decays before the beamforming uh, with the antenna isolation, but it is saturated at some point uh, due to the, uh, the significant non-line of sight components. And, but when we look at the, uh, the performance of the, uh, the, the, the self-interference power after the, the proposed full duplex hybrid beamforming solution, we observe that we can reduce, we, can, we are able to suppress the, the self-interference power uh, more than 85 dB by only applying the proposed beamforming solution. And when it is combined with the antenna isolation uh, having more than plus 50 dB, we can see that the SI power can be reduced below the, the noise floor. And in this slide, we present the achievable rate capacity for the full duplex and half duplex transmission schemes versus the uh, transmit power. And in figure five, uh, for the half duplex benchmark, we employ the uh, the fully digital uh, beamforming, DBF, and uh, also the, the proposed angular-based hybrid beamforming technique. And we observe that there is only 1.5 dB uh, gap between the digital and the, the hybrid solution. Then um, the blue curves uh, shows the performance of the, uh, the proposed full duplex hybrid beamforming uh, solution using the MMSE approach uh, for various antenna isolation uh, qualities between the 4, 40 dB to 100 dB. And also in figure six, uh, we plot the, uh, the full duplex to half duplex gain ratio. Um, here we observe that uh, the proposed FD uh, full duplex uh, hybrid beamforming can closely double the capacity. Uh, however, as long as the transmit power increases, uh, the full duplex capacity is uh, saturated as seen over here. That's why the half, uh, we observe a degradation in the half duplex to, uh, in the full duplex to half duplex gain ratio. Finally, we consider the full duplex multi-user MESI MIMO systems, where a full duplex base station uh, uh, equipped with MD transmit and MU receive antennas to serve KD downlink users and KU uplink users uh, simultaneously. And uh, however, the users are operating in the half duplex mode. And uh, due to the simultaneous transmission, downlink users are not only uh, receiving the intended signal from the from the base station, they also receive the uh, the inter-user interference uh, signal generated by the uplink users. And on the other hand, the uplink users are also experiencing the strong self-interference generated by the, the base station. And that's why in the, in the proposed hybrid beamforming based self-interference cancellation, again, at the RF stage, we use the angular information, but this time we have two different approaches. One of them is the, the earlier orthogonal beamforming, and this time we have also developed the non-orthogonal beamforming, to again satisfy this approximate zero condition, but the motivation is this time to apply the perturbation to the orthogonal beams and make them to non-orthogonal uh, beams and uh, to further improve the cancellation quality. And at the baseband stage, uh, this time we uh, use the, the well-known uh, regularized zero forcing technique for the multi-user transmission. And also we derive the, uh, the MMSE uh, solution. And that's why we have two approaches at the RF stage and two approaches at the baseband stage. In total, we, we have four combinations uh, to decide in the, in the beamformer design. And in figures seven and eight, uh, we consider the base station is equipped with 256 transmit and receive antennas and to support four downlink and four uplink users. And the, the transmit power at the base station is considered as 30 dBm and uplink uh, power is uh, 23 dBm according to the recent uh, really 70. And, and let's first uh, focus on the uh, figure 7 where the power values again plotted versus the antenna isolation. Here we have four power values, the downlink intended signal, uplink intended signal, also the downlink inter-user interference signal, uh, and the self-interference signal received in the, in the uplink transmission. But here we will concentrate on the, the uplink uh, self-interference signal at the uplink, uh, in the uplink transmission. And uh, it, it means the, uh, the blue dashed curve. And now uh, here, what we observe, uh, considering that the transmit power at the base station is 30 dBm, we observe that the self-interference power can be uh, reduced by uh, 78 dB uh, by only applying the, the proposed full duplex hybrid beamforming solution. And also 
when we have more than 55 uh, dB uh, uh, antenna isolation, the self-interference signal can be reduced below the noise floor. And uh, among the four combinations, like we have non-orthogonal beamforming or orthogonal beamforming at the RF stage and the MMSC or RZF at the basement stage. And among the four combinations, what we observe is the, the, uh, the best cancellation quality that we can achieve is the, the combination of the non-orthogonal beamforming with the MMSC at the basement stage. And finally, in figure eight, we have the full duplex to half duplex uh, gain ratio. Here, the black uh, curves sh uh, shows the black solid curve is the total uh, uh, sum rate combination of the downlink and uplink uh, sum rate. And similarly, the, the red one is the downlink and the, the blue one is the, the uplink uh, sum rate. And again, the curves are plotted versus the antenna uh, isolation. And what we observe around 55, 60 dB antenna isolation uh, we can closely double the, the capacity compared to the conventional half duplex uh, transmission. Uh, in conclusion, uh, the ever growing user demands in, uh, towards the 5G and beyond can be fulfilled with the advanced transmission techniques, exploration of the new frequency spectrum, and the, the effective utilization of the, uh, the limited bandwidth uh, resources. And thus, in this thesis, we develop uh, novel uh, hybrid beamforming techniques for various. Uh, massive MIMO uh, systems, including the multi-user and point-to-point -point, uh, scenarios, and operating in the half-duplex and the full-duplex uh, modes. And uh, in the in the hybrid beamforming design, our objectives are uh, listed in here, like the interference management, sum rate maximization, fairness, energy efficiency, improve the cancellation quality, and reduce the channel estimation overhead size. And uh, so the main contribution in uh, in this case can be summarized as follows: for the Half duplex case, we propose we develop the hybrid beamforming uh, solution that can greatly reduce the hardware cost and complexity and reduce the channel estimation overhead size, uh, but it also um, uh, achieve a, a, a closed capacity compared to the fully digital uh, beamforming. And also in the in the full duplex uh, case, uh, we propose the hybrid beamforming uh, based uh, self interference cancellation technique. Uh, by generating extremely narrow beams, we, uh, we show that uh, we can improve the, uh, we can achieve a large cancellation quality and approximately double the, the capacity compared to the conventional half duplex uh, scenario. And for the future works, the proposed hybrid beamforming solutions can be extended for the terahertz and ultra massive MIMO systems. Although terahertz experience uh, a more severe propagation environment, even uh, compared to the compared to the millimeter wave uh, uh, frequencies, the wavelength uh, uh, gets extremely uh, short. And that's why it can enable the concept of ultra massive MIMO and the, uh, with, the, with the concept of uh, array of subarray architecture. And the other possible future work is the, uh, the over the air measurement for the verification of the, uh, the proposed beamformer based uh, cancellation uh, to verify the cancellation quality with the practical uh, measurement. And uh, finally, um, uh, the utilization of the reconfigurable intelligence surface could be an effective uh, solution uh, to improve the, the performance of the massive and also ultra massive MIMO systems. Here is the, the list of uh, publications in this, uh, in the context of this PhD thesis. And here is the, the references. And that's end of this uh, presentation. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, if you are uh, interested about our works, uh, please use the below link to access our papers. And if you have any questions, feel, please uh, feel free to reach me out by sending email or uh, messages. And uh, have a great day.